you know, what people thought they saw was the biggest takedown of a villain that we've seen in this place. And actually what you actually saw was the biggest example that outsiders are not wanted. You may have seen him in Doctor Who, Kid Hood, or Bulletproof, amongst many other things. Noel Clark has been cancelled and claims that Noel Clark has sexually harassed women he's worked with. Noel Clark opens up on his biggest regrets. You know, I've been involved in conversations that I shouldn't have been involved in, but they were too. It's just I've been made the scapegoat. It's cost me ev everything. It is like watching your own murder. Why couldn't you talk? No one wants to hear you. Everything I worked for for 20 years was gone in two days. He talks about being betrayed and cancelled. Bulletproof got cancelled, Viewpoint got cancelled and pulled off the air, yeah. my company got taken from me. You're very, yeah. arro you're very arrogant and it's like, it's never meant that way, it's yeah. just like, I can't be in that cop show, can I do my own cop show? Yeah. If I didn't have that you're trying to stop me mentality, yeah. I would never have worked as hard as I did. Like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn the notification bell on. No, do you feel betrayed? Um, not really. I don't feel betrayed. I think, um, I think that people took opportunities to express their anger. I think people took opportunities to express their, what they felt was the story that they wanted to tell. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I don't think that you can be, feel betrayed if people are, are, are angry at you or, you know, whether you're aware or, or not. I feel like what I'm annoyed about is that a newspaper or particularly said journalist decided to craft a narrative out of separate stories of potential upset or, or embellishment at times or out of context stories at times. And, and that, that's really where, where, where we are. There's no, you, you, can't, you can't feel betrayed. You, know? you, you, you ultimately have to look at yourself and say, oh my goodness, did I, did I upset people that much? You know, did I upset people in a way that they felt that they had to do this? And so, you know, when you look at yourself and you go, oh, man, you know what? Maybe I did speak quite harshly to that person. Like your question was quite harsh there <laughs> as an opener. Um, you know, maybe you look at yourself and you, you, you say that and you go, okay, cool. You know, maybe I did, maybe I was involved in that conversation that was, that was inappropriate, but they, but they were all involved in it too. But when you're made the scapegoat and when you're, the, the, the target, it, you know, you can't, you can't say that. You know, it'd be very easy for me to go, well, hold on a second, this person, that person, this person, that person, this person, that person, I could, I could quite easily do that. I have enough information, I, have an, I could quite easily do that. And those are things that will come out in, 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 in court in, in, in due time, but to, to, to feel betrayed is, is no, because like, you know, there are complexities to, and nuances to almost, almost everything that, that happens. So mm. that's, that's where it is really. Mm. And have you asked yourself why this is all happening to you? Many times, M many, many times uh, uh, I've asked that question. And, you know, it, it ultimately comes down to having to really look at yourself, as I said, and, and go, <clears throat> you know, is your drive, is the drive that you have, is the passion that you have, is the, is the work rate that you have, is the absolute focused determination that you have, is that intimidating to other people? That's an easy yes, isn't it? It's an easy yes, because yeah. I was about to say, you, you're, you're a businessman, you know mm. that the vast majority of people do not have that drive. The vast majority of people do not have that passion. They do not have that, you know, and when you are passionate and driven and you're focused and you're, and you're I'm going to do this today, this morning, mm. we start at 9.15, be here at 9.15, People rock up at 9, 20, 9, 30. I'm annoyed. Mm. <laughs> I'm annoyed. Like, I'm annoyed. Yeah. Don't, come at, don't come at 9, 20. Mm. In fact, come at five past nine so you know where you're going. Go get a quick coffee and mm. be ready to start at the time that we said. You know, that's, that's, just, that's just my personality. That's how I've always been. And so, um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of where I come from on that as well. Mm. And... Do you think people are intimidated by people who have that relentless ethic? Yes. And do you think it's because it puts a mirror on the insecurities and failings of themselves? Yes. It, it, 
Like if everyone else is lazy, you can justify being lazy. If everyone else is working really hard, you've got to look in the mirror, haven't you? The short answer to that is yes. Yeah. That's a very short answer. Can we go into that? Cause, yes, yeah. the longer answer is also yes, they're intimidated, but it's not from, sometimes people have the want, they don't have the ability. Sometimes people have the ability, they don't have the drive. Sometimes people have the drive, they don't have the talent. You know, so it's a combination of all those things. Because I'm not the best at anything I do. I'm not the best actor, I'm not the best writer, I'm not the best director, I'm not the best producer. I'm not the best at any of those things. I can do them all and I work harder than most people I knew. I work harder than most people I know. So you combine being good at all of those things, not exceptional, you know, maybe I'm selling myself short, being very good at all of those things, but not exceptional. You combine that with work rate, determination, you can't beat, you're not beating me. And people don't, people didn't, people don't like that. And when you sound like me and you're from where I'm from as well, that's an added sort of distraction for people. It's an added sort of like, well, how come, how come he's there and, and I'm not? How come he's got a show and I don't? How come they're doing this and I don't? You know, I've got, I've got messages from people where it's like other people have complained to them. How come he's living in this area? Well, how come he's got these TV shows? Well, how come he's doing that? And they don't see the four years of work that went into that. They don't see that the moment one finished, I wasn't sitting there drinking champagne, you know? I remember being at a premiere once and I've been to a few, but I was at this one particular one. And someone said to me, are you excited about your premiere tonight? Are you, how do you, what do you do to celebrate? What do you do to relax? And I was like, I'm not excited. And they were like, why not? I was like, I'm already thinking about the next three things. I'm already thinking about the next three things. I never was a person, and I touched on this on something else, but I never, never was a person that would kind of be like, yeah, let's have a, let's have a drink. I saw a tweet yesterday going, he, he sounds like fun on a night out. It's because, <laughs> it's because I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't, you know, I don't yeah. do any of that kind of stuff. And I get they were being sarcastic, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, I was pretty boring because work was everything. And I didn't celebrate. I might've gone to the premiere, I wasn't celebrating. I'm already thinking about the next three things and, and the one after that as well, you know. Does that ever make you lonely being like that? Do you feel like you're misunderstood? I'm definitely misunderstood. <laughs> I'm, I'm, de <laughs> I'm definitely misunderstood. Uh, I'm definitely misunderstood. Yes and no. It didn't make me feel lonely. I was lonely, but I also didn't care. Does that make sense? I was mm. so driven with what I, I didn't. I didn't care. Like I didn't. I didn't care, I wasn't, you know, and I think, you know, is it, is this a maybe part of my, 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 my issue and part of my intimidation towards people that where people feel intimidated and part of my, my whole thing is that I kind of was just like so focused on what I was doing. I didn't always think about mm. how other people felt. Mm. I can hold my hands up as a floor, like, you know, like I didn't always think about, you know, I, I wasn't out there bullying like they said, you know, but I definitely was like, right, we start at this time, be here at this time. I didn't really want to hear excuses. I didn't really want to hear excuses. Mm. And maybe that was the businessman, the, dr the driven man in me. Like, I said, be here at this time. So I'm like, oh, but my mom, my dog's died. Mm. I don't want to hear that. Yeah. Get a new dog. And I think at times I lacked empathy, probably, mm. you know. And, and you know as well as I do, in business, you don't always have time for that. There's no time for that. He's like, we got to get done yeah. but I think you know where where I, 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 I've, I've learned is that maybe there were times I could have been like okay do you know what you're half an hour late I get it your dog died mm. I'm sorry can we now can we yeah can we fix up and I didn't always do that mm. yeah I don't think people who start businesses or entrepreneurs are warned early enough they can be really lonely I've at times felt really lonely. Yeah. It wasn't, it's, you know, it's not even a question I'd planned. Did you care I'd, though? I'd Did I care that yeah. I was like, well, yeah. at, at, Do you care? at times it was like a sadistic, you know, I want to feel more pain because I know the more pain I feel and the more obsessed I get. You know, I, I'm training for my first fight at the moment. I've trained 18 times in 10 days and everyone's telling me it's too much, you're going to burn out.
fucking much, but my brain just will not. I love not, that. What fight is it? Not. Boxing or Yeah, it's, it's boxing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Someone called me out on a podcast where you were sat and it just you're happened. Like, you're like coming in this guy? Yeah. And um, I'm coming at it like an entrepreneur. <laughs> oh like, man, work it, harder. Well, he's in trouble. Work harder. They are work in, harder. Yeah, but that's that. That it's so funny you say that because that's who I was. That's who I am. That's what I do. But that's that. That can cause carnage in your life, can't it? Uh, well, push everyone away. Get well, misunderstood. This person's threatened my children. Told people to rape my wife. Tried to find my address. Told people to stab me. But because the narrative is that I'm the villain, the journalist calls that past slights. Well, here you, here you are, and then what happens is they find ways to, look, you know, as I've said on other things, I'm not taking away what people said, you know, I, I, you know I've been involved in conversations that I shouldn't have been involved with, but they were too, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's just, I've been made the scapegoat, I've been made like, <gasps> clutch my pearls, monocle popped out, he said this, he did this, and I'm like, well, hold on a second, there was five people there, or you, you, you said, but they want to make me the scapegoat, it's done. And why, why are they wanting to make you the scapegoat? I don't think that the people did, I think the newspaper did. Yeah. I think specific journalists did. It was, it was, it was a low hanging fruit. I just, I won a career achievement award. Um, I'm disliked, I'm everything that you just said. I'm brash, I'm a, I'm a alpha male, I'm, you know, which is, poison now to be like a, yeah. a man who likes sport and likes, like it's poison. I've got, I've got that one on this. <laughs> right. So, so, you know, you, you know, you want to, you want to make a point about someone. There's, there's a few people that said, oh, he said this and he said that and he's done this and he's done that. And by the time the specific journalists were, were into it, they didn't, they didn't, once they had the bit between the teeth, they didn't care what was, you know, they didn't, they have this, they have this, they have this law, which, I think needs to be looked at, you know, and it's not about taking away journalistic freedom at all, right? But it's this law called, it's section four something or other, where they don't have to know that it's true. They just have to believe that it was. That's They don't have to know that it's true. They just have to believe on balance that it was. So once you get three or four people going, well, he said this, he said that, and you get a few more people embellishing, they don't really have to, they don't have to know that that's real. They can just say, well, we've got these three or four, so we, on balance, we can believe that the rest are real. And then you get in the situation that I'm in. You know, but it was really interesting of you know, watching things get twisted and crafted and, and, and me sitting there going, well, that didn't happen, that didn't happen, but you can't even talk. I was, there was an interesting one where I was accused of bullying a member of crew that loaded a firearm incorrectly. And it was, I was, think it was article three or four. And they said, I bullied this, berated this member of staff for loading a firearm incorrectly and, you know, made them feel bad in front of everyone and blah, blah, blah. And I did tell that member of staff off. I, I did. But that's not how the story went. The story went was like the stunt coordinator told that member of staff to put three squibs, which are the fake into uh, the, the, the debt, uh, the, the firearm. And when the stunt coordinator walked away, the person said, I'm putting six in. And everybody laughed. And I stood there and I looked around, I said, yo, my man, he told you to put three in, put three in. And this was in South Africa, actually. So then the guy looks at me, you know, all the South African actors, they put their heads down, you know, and we know there's connotations there. They all put their heads down. And this, this, this crew member, South African crew member looks at me and he's like, I'm putting six in. And I said, bro, your guy just said put three, put f***ing three. Then his, his two crew members start puffing their chest as well. So I'm standing there with these three guys puffing their chest, the, the South African actors all putting their heads down. And then I say to the guy, you can stand there looking at me all day long. If one of us doesn't have a job tomorrow, it ain't going to be me. This is my f***ing show. Put three. And oh, it becomes a complaint or whatever, like not a complaint, but it becomes a thing, mm. right? Do you know what happens when you load firearms incorrectly on set? Should we go ask Alec Baldwin? I was just gonna say. Should we go ask him? It's serious, isn't it? Should we go ask him? Mm. Right, so, so I get labeled a bully for that, but what I've told you is what really happened. Mm. So it was interesting, like watching these journalists craft this thing of like, okay, we've got a couple of things that we think are real and then taking all these other moments and turning them into something that then became what it became. Mm.
And I can sit here, I mean, we, I could sit here with you right now and go through them one by one and show you. I'm not going to do that because I've got caught and that's what I'm going to, I'm going to do that. And I, I'm not in trouble. I'm currently still taking the newspaper to court. Right. For people that don't know. Yeah. What is the state of the media right now? Like you can talk generically because um, I think it's, we've got social media that's come in. Everyone has got an opinion and they think it's really important. Every, I think people way overblow their own opinion importance. Anyone can say anything, damage someone's reputation, damage their brand, damage their business. People have talked about my business so much with no fact, and it costs me hundreds of thousands of pounds every time. It's cost me everything. Yeah. It's cost me everything. I worked for 20 years. Built my company up from, from walking down Shepherd's Bush, going to my account, and how do I start a company to being bought in by a multi-billion dollar company? I lost all of that. I lost all of that. So it's cost me everything. But, but where do I think it is right now? I think there is a massive want, even from journalists, to be heard. There's so much noise that you have to cut through and be heard. So I think even there are even journalists that kind of, they kind of want a bit of fame. They kind of want a little bit of, they want to be able to cut through and they want that attention. And the best way you get attention is by having that scoop, by having that, mm. that big, big story. And I think that in this situation, one of them in particular, I genuinely believe one of them thought, thinks, maybe still thinks that they were doing the right thing. One of them in particular, but you know, and I, I, you know, it, it, there's more I, I can say about that and I, and I will do, but I think people want to cut through and they want that, they want that. It's not the olden days we go, they want that five minutes of fame because it's not five minutes anymore. You cut through and then you're, you're, you're set. Do you know what I mean? You, you, you can be suddenly cutting through on a big story is the difference between being a generic journalist for your life or having your own talk show or having this or having that or do you know what I mean? Mm. And so I think, I think that's where it is because anybody now can have a story. So to, to be considered professional, you have to cut through. And I think there's, there's, there's- People will do whatever it takes to cut through. I think people will do what it takes to cut through. So the truth's not important anymore. I think that the truth is secondary to the story. Mm. I wouldn't say the truth's not important because I've, you know, people think I'm out here going, oh, these people are lying. There's elements of, there's kernels and elements of truth in, in some of the things that were said about me, but they're not what people think. Mm. You know what I mean? It's, it's more about, but hold on, that was a, there was, wait, there was five people there or, or, but they were involved in that, or hold on a second, but no one cares about that. It's just like, this is the person we're after. He's just won this, let's get him. Right. Let's get him. Yeah. And the fact that you, you do things like this and then the person you do it to, then three, 400 more people come forward and, and, and that's it. And then, but nobody came. Mm. Because I'm not, that, I'm not that guy that they painted in that thing. That's just not me. Mm. Yeah, no, no charges or anything, nothing. Nothing, no. wasn't even spoken to. No. Wasn't even spoken to. If you want to go, am I? Sure, but I'm not that asshole. Right, like, <laughs> you're a different guy. Kind of. I'm different. I'm just different. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just much like you describe. I'm just. I was just driven, and and not that I want to promote other people's things, but and hopefully Harry won't bleep this. But I said on the James English thing, like you got to watch that for That's those. No, we know what, James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch the James English yeah. podcast, right? I'm driven and I'm I'm focused and I'm I'm not interested in. Friendship. So when you say it made you feel lonely, and like, I embraced that. I embraced. I didn't care. I didn't care. I was. I've always been a loner. I've always been a loner. And whether I subconsciously like it or don't like it, I, I, that's something I have to grapple with myself. And I have therapy and all that stuff now. Because there are days when I'm like, I like it. You like the loneliness. I love it. Yeah, it's peaceful. Mm. Just go home with my kids, whatever. Or when I'm on my own, I play video games. Or I just, I just, I don't. I like it. I'm not a very, this will surprise people that haven't watched some of the others. Like, I didn't go out. I didn't go out. I wasn't a person that went out partying or bars or, I didn't go out. That's weird, I'm in my forties. Like I wasn't a person that went out a lot. I'm a strange guy. Like honestly, I would just, I would just go work and go home. I loved it. And when I got home, I'd flip my laptop out. I'd be working as well. The only people that got my time were my missus and my kids. Yeah. And yes, I, ha yes, I have friends, of course. But like me and my friends would traditionally go to the same places we go to, which weren't bars, be like a restaurant, we eat, 
See you later, I go home. No one, there's no one here. I saw him at this strip club. Oh, don't get me wrong, I've been to a strip club on a day or whatever like that, but there's no one out there can be like, I see him at this bar, I see him at this club. I see You can't, you can't do that because I wasn't that person. Working class, looking the way I do, sounding the way I do, not part of the elite. I was never really wanted there. They basically were always waiting for a reason. Cool, yeah. I don't have that. Really? I don't have anyway, I'll do my own one. Just a quick one, I have a digital financial toolkit for you that you can instantly download to make, manage and multiply money, build multiple streams of recurring income and increase your earnings. Now the link is in the description, it's completely free, it's my gift to you, so go and click the link in the description right now. I don't drink, I, I, I mean, he says after buying some plum wine yesterday, I don't, I don't drink, but that, that'll last me like two years. You know, I, I, I got a bottle of port I've had for six years. Like I don't drink and what I mean by that is I love champagne when my kids are born or I love a bit of it at Christmas. Mm. I've never touched a drug. I've, I don't smoke weed, which is also a drug, but you know, I'm just, you know, a lot of people go, but this weed. I'm just, for me, everything was like, how can I create this? How can I create that? I'm just driven, you know, we're talking about an idea that we just came up with the other day uh, on, on the way up here. And I said, I've already cut the trailer in my head. Mm. I know what the trailer should be in my head already. And we've not even started filming. I, 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 as you know, currently I can't even, I'm not working, I can't work, so I don't even know when I will start filming, if ever. But I know what the trailer's gonna be already. Because mm. that's, that's who I am. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it, well, I think it's weird to normal people. Yeah. Um, Normie, but, normies, normies. Should we call them normies? Well, I don't like, <laughs> no, I don't no. like to call them normies because it sounds disrespectful, <laughs> like brokies. Yeah. Um, I'm joking. Yeah, that was a joke. I, that was a joke. I know right? you were, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and I know often it, it <laughs> is. He called a joke. us normies. Yeah. <laughs> Arrogant Clark labelled regular people normies. Well, that won't be on the trailer. Um, but, but I do think no, people do it that. It won't though. be. I've cut the trailer yeah. already. <laughs> yeah. I do think people, you know, normies, brokies in our world, they look down upon people like well, that. Well, I'm a brokey now, mate, so listen. <laughs> yeah. well, anyone can be a brokey at any time. Um, but I do think the obsession, yeah. the passion, yeah. the commitment, the sacrifice, the cost, this is something that people who are entrepreneurial, business-minded, or intensely career-focused like you are, that would be the opposite of what people would define normies. I'm, yeah, 100%. 100%. And that... That's just, that's just who I am and who mm. I've always been, you know? So to watch, to have to, it is like watching your own murder. To, to sit through this thing happening and going, but no, but that didn't, but, and not being able to talk. Fuck. Was just like. Why couldn't you talk? You couldn't talk. You can't, no one wants to hear you. Everyone, oh. I got, I got, I got, I lost everything in two days. Everything I worked for for 20 years was gone in two days. I was just getting emails hitting me in my face. like. Bah, bah, bah. So when you say you lost everything, can you tell us what you lost? You're fired from, well, I mean, um, Bulletproof got cancelled. Viewpoint got cancelled and pulled off the air. Yeah. My company got taken from me. Uh, How my, did that happen? The, my own board voted me off. Got right, rid of us. Yeah. They um, um, shows I was kicked off of shows I created. Like literally, there's a show, and, and when it comes out, I'll tell everyone I created it. Don't be mm. mistaken that. But like I created from a newspaper article. Got this show greenlit. Cancelled it. I got to take my name off the scripts. I uh, had a novel deal. Taken, I had a kids animated show, which was about to get greenlit. We had two greenlit shows separately, two greenlit movies. Like everything, everything I worked for for 20 years was gone in 24 hours. Every email that came through was like, you're dropped from this, bang, 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 bang. You're dropped from that. You're, you're, an, you're no longer an ambassador of this. We're canceling this, we're stopping that. Everything it was just 24 hours before I'd even been spoken. So basically they read that thing and they were like, it's real, he's gone. That's it. No due process. No. And you haven't even been charged. You haven't I've even, not even been, been spoken to. No. The first but time. But you don't I... feel betrayed. No, I don't feel betrayed. Angry. It... I'm not angry anymore. But it's funny. Were. I saw. I was. Yeah, mm. of course. It's funny. I saw a journalist the other day. Um. Julia, someone talk about how angry I was on one of the other podcasts, and I'm just like, it's just perpetuating the narrative. I yeah. wasn't angry in the mm. slightest. And then she calls them. You know, I, I've been stalked and harassed and stuff for 10 years by a, a, an actor I used to work with who's been the whole time said that I've bullied it, like just talked absolutely uh, he, This person's threatened the lives of my children, he's told people to bang my wife, he's tried to find my address, all this kind of stuff. And this journalist said that I went on a rant about past slights from this other person. And it's like so clear when you see the narrative. 
This person's threatened my children, mm. told people to rape my wife, tried to find my address, told people to stab me. But because the narrative is that I'm the villain, I'm the villain, the journalist calls that past slights. And someone says to kill your children. Tells other people to bang your wife. <laughs> that's not a slight, mate. That's a disrespect mm. on, on, on more ways. But I don't, I don't feel betrayed because what am I supposed to do? It is what it is. To feel betrayed, you would have to believe that there was a sense of loyalty in the first place. And I know that business. Mm. I know that business. So there's, there's, there's never a sense of loyalty, which is why I was a loner. There was an actor, I'm not going to mention names, right? there's an actor that when my thing was happening, started happening, I was telling like one of my, my colleagues and they said, well, how can that be happening to you? Because this actor, and I didn't know this at the time, so for people like, well, if you knew this, you should have reported this. This actor used to bring videos. He would, he would meet girls on Raya, which is like a sort of celebrity uh, Tinder. So known people can meet known people and feel comfortable. This guy would meet people on Raya, would film him when he's at shagging, whatever, and he'd come and show the videos at work. Now, again, I did not know this at the time. When my thing started happening and I was like all over the shop, someone said, how can this be happening to you? And then said, this actor used to do this. And I was like, what? I was in the process of having him reported, right? When my thing happened. So to feel betrayed, there would have to be loyalty in the first place. Mm. Mm. So, that, that, that hit me quite hard, you saying that, actually. Yeah. Of course. Because sometimes I think we have expectations of other people and that's the best way to be disappointed, isn't it? It's the best way. It's a hard lesson I learned in therapy. Again, not probably another, plug in other people's pods, but oh, do it. you watch James yeah, English. Do it. <laughs> yes, watch James English good. podcast. It's a hard lesson I've had to learn in therapy like after this event because the trauma has been so real. you know. And again, for those people about to type by like, playing the victim, I'm not playing the victim. I don't want your sympathy. What's happened, happened. I know who I am. I know what I've done. I know what I haven't done, right? Mm. But I will say the trauma of this thing hit me like so hard. Like, mm. You know, so I've been having therapy about it. And one of the things I learned in there was like, you can't expect people to behave the way that you would. I will give someone the shirt off my back. Mm. You know, half these people that, that came and said all this, this stuff are people that I, I've, I've helped, you know, and I've got the receipts. I've got the emails, I've got the DMs, I've got the texts, I've got the private messages, I've got everything. You know, and at the time I couldn't even focus to get anything, but now I've got everything. Right? These are people I helped. Some for 10 years, like helped. I mean, got them agents, got them work, got them this. Never so much as touched the shoulder. And now this, you know, people I gave jobs to, like it's just, it's unreal. It's mm. unreal. But again, I think opportunists. They were told by a journalist, this is coming, what do you have? They added their little story, added their little story, added their little story. And then these journalists turned these stories, whether embellished or real or lied about or exaggerated, turned that into what we saw. Mm. I doubt all of those people wanted to do, wanted to actually do what happened. I think people just were like, oh, I can't stand this guy. Yeah, he actually, he did say to me this one time or he did say that one time, whether true or not, you know, because mm. a bunch of it's anonymous where I can literally sit there and rob and go, well, that just never happened. But yeah. how, can, how can I prove it? Mm. Rob, you did this. When? Can't tell you. To who? Can't tell you. What year? Can't tell you. But we know you did it. How can you defend that? Mm. Do you think the law needs to change? 100%. Right? How do we change the law? Because I definitely think defamation law needs to change. Well, again, as I said, they got this, this Reynolds, they got this, they got this stuff where they can, they can just go, well, we, we were told, we were told, so we believed it. That needs, that need, that mm. law needs to change. So they need to be able to back up what they say with facts. Well, that's gonna, well, that's the interesting thing. So what I mentioned earlier is, you can hear these three stories, right? And you can go, right, we're after Rob. And then you can phone around and 10, 20 other people can go, we've got these stories. You don't have to believe those, right? You don't have, I mean, sorry, you don't have to know they're true. You don't have to, because you can say, we believed them on the balance of these three stories. But you've got to back up those three stories. 
if you can't back up those three stories, that's when you're in trouble. Mm. And we're going we're gonna to see. Because I can tell you one thing is that just needs to change. You, you think should... it will change? How? People need to make noise about it. Mm. It'll only change. It will only change when it happens to somebody that is loved. Mm. When it happens to somebody that's loved and is powerful enough, then they'll go, there needs to be change. And everyone will go, yes, there needs to be change. <laughs> I'm mm. so sad about what happened to whoever. Yeah. When no one gives a fuck about you, then no one's looking to change it. Mm. When everyone thinks you are that, no one's looking to change it. Mm. You know, and that, that's the sad thing. Like, I worked in this business 20 years. I, you know, I was on the, I was on the, I was on the BAFTA, the, the BAFTA Film Committee is a voted process. Voted for by industry people. Every two years you get voted in. I was on there for seven years. That wasn't me like being a, doing a Donald Trump and trying to stay in power and causing insurrections and all that. <laughs> people voted me in. If I was out, if people are out there going, this guy's this, I wouldn't have got voted in for seven years. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But they turned on me, they turned on me like that, day one. Mm. Self-preservation. To feel betrayed, there has to be loyalty in the first place. Mm. Do you think maybe you're a self-professed loner to protect yourself from rejection and hurt of other people. Do you think, you know, I stay in my lane, I do my thing, no one can hurt me. But if you're not a loner, there's a risk that people can use you, betray you, hurt you, reject you. Is it a protection S mechanism? Subconsciously. That's I'm not trying to be a therapist, no, it's just I think about these things no, myself. No, no, uh, subconsciously yeah. maybe. Yeah. Subconsciously, maybe. I mean, who knows? We don't. It, a lot of these things come from childhood, childhood traumas. Mm. I've done the Hoffman process, by the way. If mm. you haven't, have you, have you done that? No, but I saw you updating your story about man, it. Yeah, man. I've had people talk about man, it. Man, oh man, oh man. Yeah. If you, if you can afford it, which you can. Yeah. Which you can. I know you can. I'm, talk, <laughs> I'm talking to them, not you. I know you. <laughs> can, you can buy the Hoffman process. You can it. Talk to them, if you can afford it, do the Hoffman process, man. It will change your fucking life. Mm. But. Point being is like, yeah, maybe subconsciously, because all this stuff comes from childhood trauma. It's funny, somebody said on one of the podcasts the other day that, you know, it's sad what's happened to this guy. He's clearly a man driven by childhood trauma trying to impress his father. And I'm like, actually, there's a big element of that in there that I discovered when I did therapy. It's like everything was me trying to go, I'm enough, I am enough, I am enough, I am enough. That's a that's common high achiever complex, isn't common it? Common yeah. high achiever complex. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's, it's just like, that's that's just who I was. So I think that I think that um, yes, whatever you said, yes. <laughs> I was checking your stories out. Yeah. Two of your stories really jumped out at me. What today? Um, yeah, today actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Remember who the f you are. Yeah. Now, to me, that is probably one of the most intense and deep six words I think you could ever <laughs> analyze. Yeah. So, who the f is Noel Clark? Well, that came from, I was out with a, a friend, and this is, the, this is the, the deepness of it, you know. There are people that have stuck by me. There are people that have stuck by me the whole two years, um, but they can't even be mentioned for fear that they'll get turned on or blasted or whatever. That's how crazy this whole thing is. But I was with one of them the other day who's seen me go through some really, really, I guess what we would call dark times, times where I'm just like, I don't know if I should even be here anymore, you know? And he just said, you are bigger than what happened to you. He said, the only reason I'm still, the only reason I'm doing what I'm doing now, you know, yes, yes, I'm talented and all that, and yes, yes, yes. He says, because you open the doors. The only reason so-and-so is directing, the only reason so-and-so is writing, the only reason so-and-so has got their production company, the only reason all these people are doing this stuff now in 2023, because in 2005, you were doing it. And you've opened doors for most of us. A lot of us, you put on, and then the, the, the tentacles of that of, you know, without, without, without kid adulthood, there's no top boy. Mm. You know, what's his name, Joe Cornish, I've, and I've saved this clip in somewhere on my phone. He said somewhere that the two films that inspired Attack the Block were Shaun of the Dead and Kiddo. Like without Kiddo, without, you know. So my friend was basically going, don't forget all of that. 
He said, what they've, what they've done or what the parts that you're responsible for, what, what's happened has happened. But he said, remember who the f you are. And I was like, oh, OK. And so I chose that picture with my tats out and I just yeah. and I wrote it. But that, that's where it came from. But I say that to, I would I would say that to everybody whenever you are down and out, whenever you think it's over and not just whatever you're doing, but you think you want to end your, your, your life or whatever. Just think about all the things you've achieved. Think about all the things you've done. Think about what is happening now and take your flowers. If people don't want to give you your flowers, take your flowers. If people don't want to give you credit, there's people I put on that are in Hollywood movies now and to this day have never acknowledged the fact, they'll mention all the films they've done and ignore the fact they did my movies. And I'm like, they don't want to give me flowers, I'll take them. Remember who the you are. Do you know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I won't even front, like, even you look at people like Lily James, biggest movie star, one of the biggest movie stars in the world. Go look at her first movie. Go see what her first movie is. And you'll find that it's Fast Girls, which is a movie that I wrote mm. and made sure she got cast in. And that doesn't take, that's not taking credit for her no. whole career. What people mistake it is like, well, you're, you're taking credit for Lily. I'm not taking credit for anyone's career. The point I'm making is everything you do is a stepping stone, right? I could argue, and we don't know, but if you follow any sort of superhero stuff and timelines, you could argue that if she doesn't, doesn't do Fast Girls, she doesn't become Cinderella. She doesn't do Fast Girls, she doesn't become Pamela Anderson, she doesn't, you know. Mm. And I've got nothing but respect for her or whatever like that, you know. This is, I'm not trying to drag her name into it before like, a bunch of journalists jump on and say I'm mentioning her shit like that. But there's a, there's a whole bunch of other actors I could mention as well. And it's like, people don't want to give you your flowers, sometimes you've got to take them and sometimes you've just got to remember what you've done and what you're responsible for and, and you know, that, that, that's, that's in everything. Mm. Like, I don't take what was said about me lightly, I don't think about it and go, off. I've never had an inappropriate conversation. Of course I fucking have. But so did all of them. Mm. So, like masculinity. Yeah. I've started to talk about that a fair bit more yeah. on this show. Yeah. I've got a 12 year old boy. I've got a 14 year old boy, an 11 year old boy, right. a seven year old boy, and a little. So, this is a conversation we need to have even if yeah. it's uncomfortable. Yeah. If not for us, if for them. Yeah. Because, you know, Every generation says, oh, it was harder for us and whatever else. But um, to me, it seems like the most confusing time in the world to be a male. Mm -hmm. With all, of course, the gender identities and the pronouns mm -hmm. and then the, from certain fraternities and attack on masculinity, yep. making it toxic. Where do you think masculinity is and what is a man? I'm a fucking man. I know that much. So that's how, that's how I see myself. That's how I identify. Do you know what I'm saying? I think masculinity, masculinity is under attack. I think that, that, that whole thing you asked why, that whole thing is I represented it, all of that. I represented all of that. Brash, masculine, don't give a fuck, attitude, working class. What's that mean? <laughs> don't want to hold the card up, but I think, you know, looking the way I do as well, I think all added. It all added to that, that whole thing. So, that yeah, just for people that are list, doing the listening version. Oh, the, listening version. I wiped version. my face yeah. in, in terms of that my skin is slightly different, a slightly different colour. Right. You yeah. know, but I'm not holding that up as the, the main thing. No. I'm holding that up as like all of those things combined made me easy pickings, as they say. Easy pickings. So, why are some types of men under attack then for being a man? Because they're viewed, because they, we are viewed as toxic. And I hate that word, I hate all the buzzwords, but mm. you're viewed as that because you represent everything. You know, I'm in my 40s, man. When I grew up, there were no apps. No. There weren't apps, man. You went out and you chatted up girls. That's how you met me. You tried and you got a lot of rejection. A lot yeah, of well rejection. I did. No, I got a lot of rejection. And yeah. you know, what they've tried to turn me into is that I can't take rejection and then he's forcing it. No, that bull I've been getting rejected. And plus I'm an actor. Rejection's part of life. Mm. Like, trust me, you know, it, it's never bothered me. You get a lot of rejection, but that's how you, that's how you met women. Like, there just wasn't, you didn't swipe. You didn't go on Hitch or Bumble or Tinder or anything like that. You went out and you met people. And, and don't get me wrong, let's not pretend that you didn't get chatted up as well. It was vice versa. That's how you met people. Mm. <clears throat> and so I think that that old world of like, hey, what are you saying, man? That is not acceptable anymore. 
right? But what they're doing is they're retroactively punishing people for how people used to talk way back in the days without, without allowing for education, without allowing for, for transition. Do you know what I'm saying? The, the, and, and I think that, that, that's a problem. And I think there are a lot of men that are still the issue because they have the old views and the old, the old things. But you have to allow people to evolve. You have to allow time for people to change. Mm. But masculinity and everything about being a man is viewed as buzzword toxic. And it's, it's not. I think you can be a man. I'm, I, you know, and people will go, well, what is a man? I can't say what I think the definition of a man is because it can be different yeah. to everyone. You know, you might, excuse me, you might like knitting and, and sewing and, and pink jumpers and still consider yourself a man. It's how you identify, right? But I know personally that for me, I feel masculine. I like to go to the gym. I like to work out. I like, I like combat sports. Uh, you know, for me, that's masculine. Mm. And before anyone gives it as no high horse, that's not to say women can't do any of that stuff. Mm. For me, that's how I, de I identify as, 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 as masculine. Mm. I like sport. I, I, I like women, not in the way that they've all said. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But that's just, mm. you know. Well, if we do end up in World War Three, which some of my guests have said we're already in, they're going to need a lot of alpha mm. men, aren't they? To <laughs> well, it's the belief that it's, it's the belief that potentially what's happened has actually started it. I'm not sure. I, I don't think people are dumb enough to get there. It would be pointless because where are we going to live after? Like, mm. Yeah, but it, I mean, it happened every hundred years. There's wars. <laughs> every 50 years, there's wars. There's, well, there's always wars. There's never stopped being wars. No, exactly. There hasn't stopped yeah. being wars. So, so let's not hope that happens. No. But I do find it interesting. I watched a video yesterday on um, one of these socials where this girl was in the gym and she was, well, I don't know, but it looked like she was doing one of those classic videos where she's going to work out on a machine and then she's going to say, oh, look, these men are watching me and they're creeps. And then that's what it looked like it was going to be. And she got on this machine and she unhooked it and she and the weights just collapsed on her. She like collapsed on her and crushed her down. So like and literally her head's between her knees. She's ah. And two men ran over and helped her lift it up the stuff which she couldn't get out of and, and racked it and got her out and then you see her in her collar and she's off to the hospital and all that. And I couldn't help but think to myself, what if they didn't help her? What if they went, I ain't helping her because I don't want to be called a creep or I'm touching or this, that and the other. And I was just like, what would have happened if nobody helped her? Because now everyone's filming these videos and they're, they're doing this thing and the, and the tightest clothes and they can wear whatever you like. And then some guy would mind his business and do 15 reps and he'll just go, and oh, oh you, you should be in prison. Like, it's just unreal, like, mm. it's unreal. And all of that stuff is, all of that stuff is just in a, a, a just because someone glances at you, it doesn't mean they're going to follow you home. No. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think we just need to look at, we just need to have balance. We just need to have balance, <laughs> for sure. If you're there working out and a guy's like dribbling and fucking, <laughs> yeah. or, or, or even you, looks- You look good doing or that, even, yeah. even, Oh, cheers, mate. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're gonna freeze frame that one, but look, <laughs> yeah. we were right about him, yeah. yeah. And, or keeps looking over too much, I think there's a conversation to be mm. had, for sure. Like, dude, like, are, you, are, you, are your eyes okay? Mm. Like, you keep flicking over to me, are you all right? For sure. Yeah. But I think, you know, just like, attacking people and blasting them online is just not is not the way there needs to be balance but that comes back to what i spoke about earlier with people wanting to cut through yeah people wanting to be heard people wanting to have their voice heard i want to be seen i want to be you know chris rock said in his tour recently he did it in the netflix special but weirdly three months before that i saw him at the o2 and the whole netflix special was the same thing apart from the last will smith bit he said the biggest drug in the world right now is attention Wow, yeah. And it's the biggest currency in business as well, isn't it's it? It's the biggest currency in business, yeah. biggest drug in the world is attention. And Fuck, I mean, that's, that scares me in a way. I know I've got to play that game if I want to be successful in business, but to me, that's a double sword. Do you? Do you? Well, if, if you've got a great business idea and no one knows about it, you haven't got a great business idea, have you? Sure, but I, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Mm. I don't know if it, if it needs the attention though, but uh, it, is, it is scary. And then you have to really think about, was it always that, but there just wasn't, the avenues weren't there. Mm. 
Yeah, or anybody you, now can be the most famous person yeah, in the can. world tomorrow. Yeah, and so when it's attention for tension's sake, that's dangerous. Yeah, how many likes can I get? Yeah, this isn't going to go viral. Delete it. Do it again. How do we do it? Like when it's it's everyone wants mm. to cut through. Yeah, oh, I cut my knee today, and then they, the dopamine release when fifteen people go, "I'm sorry that happened to you." Yeah. Yeah, I mean that that opens a whole wormhole of for fear fear for mankind that because i know i don't allow my own. kids on so i don't allow you my, don't no 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 one of my sons has one of my sons has instagram but he follows no one only like a yeah. couple of people family-wise follow him and he doesn't i don't allow them on it mm. i don't allow them to have accounts to be getting dm'd or bullied or you know whether people know that my kids are not i just don't allow it yeah yeah Sorry, I interrupted. No, you. no, you don't have to be sorry. This is your show. <laughs> but um, <laughs> you know I, what? I, I think mean. it's your show. Uh, one thing I've always tried to maintain as an interviewer is to talk as little as possible and let my guests talk as much as possible. Right. Um, but um, some of my best content, <clears throat> so discussion around this quandary, I know some of my best content has the relatively lowest amount of views. Mm. I know there's some content I've put out there where I hacked a little bit and I, I thought I can get some virality on this and I did. Yeah. And I don't, I don't I've not done anything wrong. Yeah. You know, it's what people have said. But Which is what you'll probably do with this one. Well, we will try and get, this is a really good question. I love how you because, it. But it, it will be. I know it will be because. Well, we, how, look. Harry will try and edit a trailer that obviously will make people get, watch it. Yeah, will make people yeah. watch it, which you are a master of because that's what you do. And thus, thus you will pick the lines that I say that will seem the most controversial in the trailer. Like, yes, in the trailer, but, seem the most but, hooky that will get people. But to in watch the edit, it. Unless, no, I, yeah, unless you say no, I know that. Yeah, unless you say we won't take anything out. No, I know that. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm aware of that. Yeah. But like again, it comes down that to that makes me feel a bit dirty. It's a dirty trick. Well, I'm not playing. I mean, I'm but not you saying do it. No, you do it in movies. Don't you, you do it in movies. Yeah. Except it's not people's lives in movies. It's like it's different. It's drama. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I mean, but, but, we'll only but, take but what's comes, being said. Of course. Yeah. But when it's shown in a trailer, it's out of context. Yeah, it is. And thus, it's really done to just get people to watch it or to continue to, go, to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. He said what? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But and but, that makes me feel a bit like a whore. I, like, I do feel a bit... A sex worker? No, yeah, sorry. I've just f***ed myself, yeah. I That's can come right. for some advice. <laughs> no. A sex worker, which yeah. is a perfectly respectable profession content these days. Content whore, content whore. <laughs> con con it makes me feel like a content sex worker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, I, I'm, I'm expressing honestly how the quandary I have, because you know I was a very respectful business owner far before I used social media, had hundreds of properties, built proper businesses, yeah. and now I've sort of come into this world where I've got this business experience behind me, which... I could put in jeopardy if I yeah. say some silly things, but you know all the algorithms and the social media channels and people's attention. Like, if you don't play that game, I've some of my great content, my great guests has had two thousand views, and some of them have had four million views. Hundred percent, I get it. So what you'll do is, you know, instead of just putting out a picture of us going on nose on the podcast and having people go, oh, we just see him on three others. You'll find the line that you think hasn't been said on any of the others. You'll find the moment you think that sounds the most controversial, and that's what well, Harry, Harry will. That's what Harry will. Harry will. Yeah. Blame Rob. That's yeah. what Harry will put in the edit for people to go. Oh, I need to watch that. But I'm I'm aware of that. But mm. that's 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 what will happen. That's what's done. And add to your point, in trailers, you make your trailer exciting mm. so people want to watch a movie. Yeah. And so, I get it. It doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean I believe it's right. But to cut through. That's what needs to be done. Mm. Yeah, that's that's one I wrestle with. I would honestly, I'd actually not like to do that. I'd like to have two, three, four, and five hour deep and meaningful conversations. Oh, well, with I love that. Really, I could talk all day. Yeah, with really interesting people and get to know them and go everywhere and ask some hard questions and let them have their story and then just show it to the world and yeah. do none of this gimmicky. That's but. I'm forced in a world where if I don't play certain parts of the game, no, I don't no, get my content no. seen. I, I, I know that. I know that. Mm. But you know, it, it's it's the same for. It's the same for for me. What I'm doing, you know, like. People think that I've not been. I've been offered conversations for two years. 
I decide what I've done. Mm. And I've only decided in the last month or so. Mm. And I've picked the ones I've done. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So like for me as well, is like I'm, I'm picking people that I think are, that have integrity, apart from the way they do their trailers, Harry. Um, <laughs> I'm not um, throwing him under the bus, but he does the trailers. No, of course. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> I, I, but, but, I, but I know what's going to get done, right? Yeah. Um, I don't look them because I know I won't like them. <laughs> <laughs> Should Harry have a job then? <laughs> Well, he's better than me at what he does. Yeah. He's giving me the evil now. I, I try to do he's my like, job. Shut the f up, man. Yeah. He's there with the things. Don't, don't you, get, don't you say that. I'll make you look terrible. Um, do you know what I mean? So I'm pick, Point is, is you know, even I know who I've picked and why. Mm. And why did you pick this one then? I like you. <laughs> I don't know you, but no. I like you. And, I appreciate and that. And also, you weren't, you weren't a. You weren't like a journo, you weren't mm. like a, uh, there's an agenda, you know it's going to get views, you know it's going to get views, that's mm. why we're here, right? Yeah. But I like the handwritten note as well. Yeah. I thought that was a nice touch. Yeah, thank you. Do you feel embarrassed now that you wrote a handwritten note? No. It, was I not supposed to, okay. No, good. no, yeah. I don't feel embarrassed. So I've actually been telling people to do that. It was nice. And most of the great guests we've got, we couldn't get through their Instagram, couldn't get through their agent. It's handwritten note. Yeah. Did Harry write it? No. You wrote, did yeah, you actually write yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah, and obviously I do my Instagram, which a lot really? of people don't. No, I like yeah, obviously, that. Um, I, can't, I don't say his name because everyone will try and nick him, but you know my assistant as well. Yes. Because um, he's been with me for 17 years and he's fucking 17 brilliant. years? Yeah, and I'm not having anyone nick him. He's fucking brilliant. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I nearly said his name once. Ever, it would just be gone. Yeah. Um, let's talk about your career. Yeah. Because honestly, yeah. that is... Um, was. <laughs> Will be. Um, Hopefully, yeah. I mean, you've done some amazing in your career. I mean, you were successful. I was, yeah. Very young. Sorry, Harry, don't, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go on. Yeah, so um, one thing I wanted to ask is did you secure 600 grand of funding for kid adulthood? No, I didn't secure it. Right. There was a producer that secured it. Have you ever raised funding for your films? Yeah. Yeah, I've been involved in raising funding for some of the later films, meeting the right people and, and, and bringing stuff together. Although I'm not a very good, like, I'm not a very good, uh, I'm not a mathematician. So once the thing's greenlit, I can bring stuff in, but once it's greenlit, you come and do the budget, you come and do yeah. the, you know, right. you come and do that, you look after the account, you be the line producer, I'm not, you know, I'm not all of that. But yeah, yeah. so I brought money to some of the later films, so you're looking at like, you know, your, your, your brotherhoods, your 10 by 10s and, and stuff like mm. that, for sure. But the early one, Kid Hood, it was 600,000 or maybe 550 or whatever like that. I did not raise any of that. No. No. I was just a, excuse me, I was just an actor who was writing at yeah. the time. And how did your life change after Kid Hood? It didn't. Really? I mean, it did in terms of like, I was suddenly had a movie out there, mm. but it didn't do, you know, people see everything I've achieved and think that I was let in or that I was like the chosen one. I was not, I was most definitely not. And, but I've just kept going and kept jumping the obstacles and bursting through the barriers and op kicking the doors open. And when they lock the doors, climbing in the window, like. Mm. So after kiddohood, uh, nothing, I got nothing. Like I didn't get any, I didn't get any more real opportunities to write and direct. So I did what I always do. I just wrote myself. I just wrote, I just wrote scripts, just wrote, much like I'm doing now. I've got mm. now, I'm just writing. Yeah. I'm just writing. I'm just writing some of the best stuff I've ever written. And I look at everything that's happened. And I look at the things on TV and I kind of, part of me is like, oh man, I wish I was doing what I do. And they're going, oh, you're so arrogant. Like the stuff I did was always different. It was always different, you know. I've been told I'm on the spectrum before, you know. My by a normie, probably. <laughs> yeah, by, by a normie. Yeah. I've been told I've been told I'm on the spectrum a few times. I've never been diagnosed, so this is self-diagnosis, or whatever. <laughs> but I have been told a few times, right? And I can buy it because, <clears throat> you know, I have this just different way of thinking about things. You know, bit of OCD, bit of sort of like, you know, go to a restaurant, order the same thing, walk, leave out the same door when I leave Sainsbury's. You know, like you know, want to go on the same holiday all the time, like it's a bit of mm. stuff there. But like, I have this off kilter way of thinking, which that means that if my voice is not on TV or film, it's just like, for me, I'm just, 
Kid Hood and those films were how, different. How are you different? How's your content different? I don't know, man. I, 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 I feel I know my audience and I know what they want to watch. Mm. I feel like I just think in an off kilter way. I'll give you an example mm. in a second, but you know, Kid Hood and those things were different. Kid Hood, the bulletproof, the cop show. Like, when have you ever seen a cop show like that in the mm. UK? Like, mm. the more procedural, the more like that was just action. Mm. It was like vibes. It was like bad boys. I think differently. Um, so an example is in season one of Bulletproof, there's a scene in, in episode, I forget what episode it was, where there's a villain who's done something. I think he's kidnapped Ashley's kid. And then I catch the informer and I threaten him with a crowbar. Threaten him with a crowbar and I go, you're gonna tell me or I'm gonna hit you, or whatever like that. And he's like, you're not gonna hit me, blah, blah, blah. Now we know in 99% in of British cop shows, they're not gonna hit him with a crowbar, they can't do it, it's procedure, it's whatever like that. And I had a big battle with the broadcaster because I was like, he's got to hit him. And they were like, whoa, well, he's a police officer, he can't, he can possibly, I said, you know, there's protocol. I said, yeah, on TV, I said, he's got to hit him. He says, because if I'm Joe Public sitting at home and this villain's like, you ain't gonna hit me. And the cop knows he can't hit him. That's what we always see. Mm. I said, but if he hits him, everyone at home's gonna be like, oh my God, he fucking hit him. Mm. So he's got to hit him. Mm. That's what this character has to be. That's what we've got to do. And it, it, it had to go up like levels yeah. to get approval to come yeah. down. And eventually they said, yeah, fine, hit him. Mm. You got the scene, blah, blah, blah. and I f***ing clumped the guy with a crowbar. Mm. And the amount of people that said to me, bro, when you hit that guy with a crowbar, I was jumping up in the air. Because as an audience member, you've got a villain like that. You think, that's f***ing hard. If that, if that was me, I would hit him. And if you've got a character that you relate to that then does stuff like that, that's what draws you in. Mm. And the reason that a lot of the stuff I did was successful, it wasn't because it was the best, it wasn't. It's because I did things that the audience themselves would want to do. You know, I made them on the edge. I made our films slightly racier than a 15 would be, you know. We basically cut them and the BBFC would go, that's an 18. Mm. And we'd go, why is it an 18? Tell us exactly why it's an 18. They'd go, well, f on 18 minutes, 51 seconds, you have a frame and you show this and da 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 da. And then we would just trim out the frames that they complained about and send it back. And they'd be like, motherfuckers, <laughs> this is now a 15, but you're on the line. We're like, but it's a 15, yeah. And I would do all of that stuff intentionally. And did that, does that make you feel good? It does, it's not that it makes me feel good, but it's like, I know when I was young and Robocop was an 18 and I was 15, oh, yeah. I wanted to watch Robocop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't and the Arnie films. And the yeah. Arnie films. I didn't want to watch the films that were from my age. Nah. So I always tried to make things, I always tried to be that when I was making stuff. And so when they say, oh, his stuff is misogynistic, it wasn't intentionally, mis I wasn't intentionally like, oh, I'm going to show boob, I'm going to show this mm. and that and the other. It wasn't like, because I was leering. It's because I was like, I know what the audience wants to see. So I'm going to just, in a 50, and I'm just going to have that there on the edge so that people in the cinema are going to be like, all right, let's, did you see, did you see that? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. when they leave, they, what they do, tell their friends, man, mm. you got to watch the film because it, this, this happens and that happens. And then when the films make money, everyone's scratching their heads. How did they make money? But this other film we made, which was wonderful, made no money. It's because that's what I do. I just think slightly differently. Mm. I just always thought oddly, mm. I'm odd. <laughs> do you see yourself as an entrepreneur? Would you say you're an entrepreneur? No. Short answer, no. What would you call yourself? If you're like identifying, if you had to put on the top of your CV, applying for jobs, what would you put as your... I've no idea. No. Just a, I'm just a guy. Because a lot of my guys don't know what... That, I've yes, no so, idea. No. I feel like to be an entrepreneur, you have to have... I guess I do have a lot of ideas. I feel like you have to have... I feel like you have to have backing. I feel like you have to have, I, I, no. I feel like I've never had backing. It, for, to be an entrepreneur, you either need to have your own finance, your own capital, or you have to have backing to, 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 to make your ideas go forth. And I've always thought of myself as the, the outsider. I've always thought of myself as the, the, the black sheep. So I've never thought that I've had backing. And most of my things have been financed independently, apart from when we got to Bulletproof TV. But then I will always hold on to the fact that they told us for years that will never get made. I always, I always use the negative stuff as, fu as, as fuel, mm. as fuel. 
Do you know what I mean? Mm. I'll, I'll, I'll always use that, you know, and I get, again, that's a thing I had to really look at in therapy. It's like, but you've achieved the number one, you had the number one show in, in, the, in the country. Like, were you, were you celebrating? I was like, no, I was going because you told us it would never happen. Yeah. And that was my, that was my, that was my drive. That was my fuel. Everyone's like, man, this is brilliant. And mm. I'm like, yeah, but they told us that we'd never do it and we'd done it. Mm. And they were like, just celebrate for a second. Mm. And I'd be you, like, no. Do you think that's healthy? No. I think it's helpful. I think it's helpful. Mm. I don't necessarily think it's healthy. I think there has to be a balance there has to be a ba there has to be a balance. I don't want to admit that there has to be a balance, but I feel there has to be a balance. But I also think it's helpful and it helped me more. If I did not have that drive and if I didn't have that sort of if I didn't have that you're trying to stop me mentality, mm. I would never have worked as hard as I did. Mm. I would never have had that drive, I'd never have had that passion, I would have never had that that focus, I would never have had that I'm gonna show you. Because even, <laughs> even when people weren't trying to stop me, I was like, they're trying to stop me. I'm going to work harder than them. Mm. You know what I mean? It was something I had to learn about myself. That I have to hold my hands up and go, how can you be better? And I don't mean better as in lose it, because it helped me. But better as in not always. I would walk into meetings. All right, well, let's see what they're going to tell Let's see what they're going to tell me I can't do. They're like, it's wonderful to see you. And I'd be like, yeah, you too. And in my head, I'm like, you don't f mean that. <laughs> <laughs> it's an attitude for sure, but it, 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 it fueled me. It fueled me in terms of making me work harder than most people. Mm. I had a conversation with a really successful artist, but he's not that well known, but he's basically Banksy's inspiration. And I think about this sh all the time and you've just kind of like woken it up in my head and, and it's this. I said to him, are any great artists happy? And he said, well, yeah, surely some. And then we went through it and by the end of it, he agreed. No. You can't be happy and a great artist. No, you can't. Because you're always, no, you can't. And there's so much in the world now, maybe, you know, let's use some terms like woke and left and blah, 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 about, you know, happiness and taking part and all that. And I just think, I look at anyone who's great at something, an artist, you know, a sports person, an entrepreneur, happiness isn't the goal. No. They're not happy people. They're productive. They're relentless. You know when you said helpful? Yeah. Not happy. I'm not happy that I'm taking everyone's, you know, energy of you're going to fail and turn it into a mission. Yeah. I'm not happy about that at all, but it really helps me. It helps me, yeah. yeah. It's so do you think anyone that's going to be great at anything can be happy no, as well? No, well, it, 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 no, is the short answer. The longer, <laughs> the longer answer I like both is, versions. But the longer answer is, of course, I'm happy when I'm with my kids. Mm. I'm happy when I see my family in Canada, because all my family went to Canada from Trinidad. Like, my mum came here, they all went there. I'm happy, like, I'm happy. Mm. Like, I'm happy. But Not that's... Entirely. Yeah, that, they make me happy. Mm. But in my ultimate like drive, happiness would not have me doing what I did. No. I would not have succeeded if I was happy, no. right? I would not have. Someone said to me, and again, watch James English. Sorry. He he said to me, "Were you ever satisfied?" And I was like, "No." Well, that's not the goal, is it? People think that's the goal. Well, here's the interesting point. He said to me, "What was the goal then?" I don't know what the goal was, because every time I got there, I, I, it was another one. Well, it's progress, isn't it? But where does it end? It doesn't, because it, do, it, it can't do, end, it otherwise do, it's right. no progress. That's right. Yeah. So, so every, time, every time I set a goal in my head or I set a, a thing that I wanted to achieve, I want to have an action figure. I want to have my own TV show. I want to have my own movies. I want to have my own company. I want to star in my own movies. I want to be a bona fide star in this country and not have to jet off to America. I want to... I want to produce this, I want to write this. Every single time I had a goal in my head where I thought, when I have that, <laughs> I'll be good. When I got there, I wasn't good. I was like, what's next? Mm. 
I remember the ultimate thing was like, one day I want to get a, a, a BAFTA, and then I got one. And I was like, I don't give a fuck about this. Mm. Put it on the shelf. How do I get another one? Yeah. What do I do tomorrow morning? I want to star in a movie. Done that. I, I, was, I was never, you know, I had goals. I will say dreaming is for sleepers. I didn't have dreams. Dreaming is for sleepers. I'm mm. not a sleeper. I'm like goal oriented. But the problem or the issue or the, 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 the drive, whether you see it as positive or negative, the fact remains is when I got to those places, <laughs> it's like in The Dark Knight when Heath Ledger says, I just do things. I'm like a dog chasing a car. I wouldn't know what to do if I caught one. <laughs> yeah. I love that, man. I loved it because it's, I'm the same. Like, I got to those points where I was like, this is what I want to achieve. And then I did it. Had my action figure on my hand. I was like... What do I do now? Mm. And, and that was continue every time. Like we got our, when we got our production company, <laughs> we got our production company, because we basically, our, our films are doing well, blah, blah, blah. We got into TV, we got our production company, Bulletproof's there, whatever. And I remember going very early on and pitching a show to a broadcaster, very early on. Because in films, right? In films, if you give me the money for a film, I can make a film. I can make a film and it's coming out. It's coming out somewhere. In TV, you've got the broadcasters. So even if you gave me the money for a TV show, if the broadcasters don't put it on... So very early on, we had a meeting, I pitched a show, and they were like, we love this, but it's not for our channel, whatever. And then we ran out of channels, and I was like... Went back to a business partner. We are like, surprised they didn't pick up that show. And he was like, you're all right. I was like... We need our own TV channel. That's how I always thought. How do you get around the people that are... Immediately, I was like, we need our own channel. Because yeah. if we had our own channel, then I don't need to f And then he said, well, you know, what if people, who's going to watch the channel? And I said, ah, yeah, but you're not thinking straight. Because sometimes in America, when you pitch a show, they'll go, yeah, we can give you X amount of millions per episode, but who's your UK broadcaster? Who's going to show it in the UK? So essentially, like, they didn't care who's showing it as long as it was shown. So I was like, if we had our own channel, we could get our shows financed in America. Because when they go, who's showing it in the UK, we go... X channel, they don't give a f mm. You know what I mean? So we were trying to always find, find our ways around. Like, that's how I always thought. Mm. There was never a day, and it's sad. There's some people who are gonna watch this and go, well, that's f***ing sad. Mm. But maybe they're not as driven as you or I. Mm. There's some people who are gonna be watching and be like, I get that, that's me. Mm. And good luck to you. I don't think it's fully healthy, but if you are not a person that doesn't have it, you won't understand. If you are a person that has it, you will understand it helps you. You are successful because you have that drive. You are successful because every time you get to that point where most people would go, ah, you're just like, see ya, and you keep going. I had friends of mine say to me, oh yeah, I could get a promotion at work, man, and you know, but I think I don't want it. I'll just coast along and I'm like, what? I'm like, you could get a promotion, but you don't want it because you just want to coast along. I'm like, that's alien. That's alien talk to me. Like, I'll take it all. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And then when you're at the top, you don't have to, then you don't have to work if you don't want. Mm. That's just who I've always been. Mm. I know it sounds, when I say it out loud, I'm like, it sounds crazy. But anyone who has it will, will understand yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. And do you think that's the way you can take your career to the next level? Um, you've had some disruption to it, but... <laughs> Fucking dis well, I'm, I'm sure disruption. If, 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 well, if, if Fucking we, I'm, I'm absolutely convinced um, if we get to have a conversation in the near future, you'll be right back in the game where you want to be. I'm absolutely convinced of that. I'm, I'm glad you were convinced. I think there are battles that people don't... A lot of the doors I opened were not opened for me. I think this is known. People know that I was sort of, you know, I, I got in the doors, kicked them down or whatever like that. So I was never wanted in those rooms anyway. So now those doors have been slammed with what is, is seen as reason. Those people now don't have to open the doors. Do you know what I mean? So it's a lot more difficult now than it even was starting out. So I, I, honestly, I honestly don't know. You know but it, it's, it's just, you know, what people thought they saw was the biggest takedown of a villain that we've seen in this place. And actually what you actually saw was the biggest example that outsiders are not wanted. 
because I was always an outsider and they basically were always waiting for a reason. Always waiting for a reason, which is why, obviously I, I don't like these things anyway, which is why I always thought, don't do any drugs, don't drink, don't be in any parties or situations where you can never, never did anything. Don't fall out of the, the string fellas at 3 a.m. with some stripper or whatever. Never done none of that. You can check back my 20 years. There's none, there's none of that stuff. Firstly, because I didn't want to, because that's not me. But secondly, because I was always conscious. You know, so when people go, oh, he was doing all the, I thought I was flying straight. Mm. I genuinely did. I know what's being said. I know what people believe or what they, but I genuinely thought I was like, a person that was flying straight. I've seen people not fly straight, so I know what that looks like. Mm. There's people that are working now, there's people that everyone claps and cheers, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I know they don't fly straight. I thought I was flying straight. Do you know what I mean? So, so it's, it's harder now, because actually, you've been painted as this thing, but actually what it really was was like, working class, looking the way I do, sounding the way I do, not part of the elite. I was never really wanted there, You'll find some new doors to kick down though, won't you? If you're a door kicker, you just, you're just in that yeah, got transition to, of finding some new doors got to, to kick down. I've got down. to find them. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking. That, dr that drive and that determination and that everything that I, you know, I, I'm looking, you know. Mm. But it, it's interesting. It's funny because you know, the, the, the narrative is I saw this journalist the other day and he, he, he basically, he said, he put out this tweet saying, Clark's powerful industry friends were inviting journalists out for dinner and trying to convince them to uncancel him. It, I, as soon as I knew this was the thing, I left the meeting immediately and left, and that's what every journalist should do. So I saw this thing, and two minutes later, I get a, a text from the person that took him to dinner. And she says, I just saw what that journalist said online. And she's like, that is absolutely not what happened. She says, I took this person to dinner and your name came up, and that is the be all and end all of it. But when these people have a narrative, and they put out their narrative, it can just spread like wildfire. So that's what, it's those sorts of things that make everything a little bit more difficult than, than it used to be. But as I said, I'm looking and I'm trying to just do what I do. Mm. I'm creating, I'm writing, I'm yeah. writing probably the best stuff. I'm probably writing the best stuff I've ever written, wow. to be honest. And you might not have had the time or space were this not happening. 100%. Yeah. I've spent more time with my baby than yeah. There's more time with this baby than all the, than all the others mm. at this age. Yeah. You know, so this one actively looks for me. Mm. <laughs> all the others, I was sort of a secondary thought if yeah. mum wasn't around, where this one will get up and look for me. Mm. You know, so that's been special. Yeah. Well. yeah, so I've got this mentor and he says that um, wisdom and maximum growth is on the border of support and challenge and every situation, event or person has an equal upside and downside. And um, generally when bad things happen to us, it's because we're seeing just the downside and none of the upside. The upside is there, we just can't see it yet unless we have wisdom and presence. Yeah. And yeah. often we can go five years into the future and look back and go, that was one of the best things that ever happened to well, me. I don't know if I say that, but I get, yeah. the, but I get the point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and are, you out of the, are, are you sort of out enough now to be able to start to see some of the upsides of this? I'm starting, no. <laughs> well, you just said one, your youngest baby coming to you. Yes, yeah. Is, is that not a memory? That's, you can, that's is that, cherished, 100%, yeah. yeah. And you're writing the best shit you've ever written. You're right, you're right. And you right. wouldn't have had the space for that if you you're, were you're banging very right. out. See, but this, yeah. is my, this is my personality. And you're of, on this show as this well. Is, I'm on this show. This is my personality of like, I see the opposite because it fuels me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But you're right, yeah. You know, I, I think, I don't yet see the upside to the situation because I, because I think it was a, a messed up situation for a lot of people. For myself, the people that, that said what they said, for the ones that believe what they said, yeah. you know, um, for the ones that know that they're talking mm. for the people that I, I have upset in, in ways that I'm like, well, hey man, if, if I've upset you, then yeah. fine. But what, but what happened didn't need to happen, should never have happened, had no right to happen. And, and I, think, I think everyone's starting to see that now. Mm. Um, but, Coming out of that for everyone, uh, I hope that all of them can just move on. And I'm just trying to just move on and mm. get on with my life and, and do what I do better than a lot of people, even if people don't want to admit that. 
and do what I do and, and, and just create. Because that's that's what I'm that's what I'm here for. It's funny when the day this the day it all happened, I had a vision of something which I, I won't tell you about unless it happens. But it was something when you say the upside, it was something so up that it was almost like why are you having this vision in this situation? It's like the day after this all happened, it's like a, like a nightmare. I was having nightmares, sweats, you know, panicking about everything. And I just had this, this one vision, which was like a really positive vision, just plucked out of nowhere. And I believe that can happen because I know me. Mm. I know what I do. I know who I am. I know how hard I work. I don't see how I'm getting there to whatever that vision was. But I believe it can happen because mm. I know that I would have got there anyway. Mm. So it'll be interesting. If it ever does, I'll come here first. Oh, I look forward to that. <laughs> you heard that here. <laughs> if it does, I'll come here first. Deal. Deal. Don't what? tell James, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> James is getting some good plugging on our show. Hey, I'm sorry, yeah. man. Is that no, no, it's I'm not advertising. No, no, sorry. no. Fr free advertising. Um, we're doing a collab, aren't we, James and I? We're talking. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to do something together. And oh, good. We've had some similar guests. Um, He's a good guy. Yeah, yeah. There's some sort of crossover of, of guests. So, what makes a great creator? Like you talked a lot about creating. What makes a great creator? Unique. I think unique ideas that know who they're meant for. Do you know what I mean? Like something unique. Whether you whether it's you know something unique. Whether it's films. Or, you know, I, I mostly focus on films and TV because that's what I do. But like even with other things, something unique. Something that is different. Right, but also, excuse me, knowing who they're for. Like, I know who my things are for. I know what, what I do. Like, yes, you want something for everyone, but that's not, that's no. not reality. No. There's going to be people that hate the shape of your water bottles. Do you know what I mean? It's just, just not reality. So you have to go, I know who this is for, and hopefully that bleeds out to a general populace where more people can enjoy it. So for me, that's, that's a, that makes a great creator. Mm. And consistently, whether it's, Quality or quantity, but consistently coming up with, with things. Mm. For me, you said earlier you you were okay or right, like good with rejection. Yeah, um, I think that's really hard um, to really be okay with rejection, and I think a lot of people are not. Uh, and if they are, they're constantly working on that. So how do you become Teflon rejection proof? face it, own it. Something I learned very early on, I just sort of shut it off because I think the more you think about rejection, the more it will hurt you, the more it will chink your armor. And so you have to know that most things you're rejected from, you didn't have in the first place. So well, everything, I suppose. You're yeah, trying to get it. Because you're trying to get it. Yeah. So if you, you never had it. You never had yeah. it. So I, therefore I'm like, well, I didn't have it in the first place. But then again, the fuel, mm. I, the fuel I would, so I'd be like, it wouldn't bother me. I yeah. just have to go, you have to, I have to let it go. Do you think they, therefore maybe some people build up such a fantasy picture of the thing that they're going to oh get, man, they're setting I, themselves up. If I get up, this, man, if yeah. I get this, if I get this. And Everything then, will be great. When this happens, my life yeah. will be amazing. And then you, you, you don't get it and then it yeah. crushes people. So I, I made sure that, you know, because there was a, a, a stage where it kind of like, oh. And then I was like, no. Nah. And then I literally was like, no. That just, you know, I've been rejected my whole life anyway, even from small, like, you know, not having certain parents around. So, you know, getting into the industry, there was a moment where I lost myself and then I was like, nah, go back to that. When you say lost yourself, what do you mean? There's a moment when I first got into the industry, when I bought into like, man, if I get this job. Oh, right. Yeah. Like very early on, yeah. first few. And then I just was like, reset. Yeah. No, just be who you are. Mm. And then I was just like, nah, I never had it. In, I never had it in the first place. So it didn't bother me. I just, yeah, I'm talking like, I've been up for big movies where you get that movie, Done. your life's changed. Yeah, and like not, going on Joe Rogan or something. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah and, and not getting them and, yeah. and just have to just, you just have to just let it go. Yeah. The, I think where I'm slightly different is, I also had this like, well, f them anyway. I'm gonna do, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna f them anyway. I'm gonna do my own one. Yeah. I'm gonna, and, Anyway. That's what makes me different. And it wasn't like I hate it wasn't like I hate them. No. It was like, all right, cool. I wish I could feel that. It was like cool. Yeah. I don't have that Fuck them anyway. Them anyway. I'll do my own one. That's what I'd like the trailer to be. Fuck them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see that as the last line. <laughs> Harry. 
Do you, do you know what I mean? Like, and I think that's where I differ. I think that's where I get this attitude that people label me with because yeah. I, I have it. I have yeah. it. Like, you know, I don't. I have it. Um, that people just rubs people up the wrong way. I would go, you know, because there's people that would be like, "Oh, I'm so destroyed that I didn't get this role," and oh, Jeeves, you're so humble. Well, you know, it would have been one. And then there's the people that are like, "Well, you know, I didn't have it anyway." And, oh, what a good attitude. And then there's me. I'll them anyway. I'll do my own one, and people. I'll do my own one. You're very, yeah. arro- you're very arrogant, and it's like it's never meant that way. It's mm. just like that's how I process it. I'm like, okay, cool. I can't be in that cop show. Mm. Come, I'll do my own cop show. Yeah. And then five years later, you get bulletproof. And everyone goes, oh, how lucky is he getting a cop show? And they haven't seen, they haven't seen the yeah. they haven't seen the journey and the maze and the, the obstacles and the hall of mirrors that you've had to go through to get it. They just mm. see, you know, but that's, that's, kind of, that's kind of who I am. Mm. That's strange, I know. Mm. I know, when I say it out loud, I'm like, you're a fuck. I like that, I like that. A lot of people my don't. Dad's a like lot that. of people don't. <laughs> yeah, my dad's like that. And I think that I became a bit the opposite of that as a reaction to my dad being like that. You've got to, you've got to do the Hoffman, man. Yeah. Because they, they talk about that uh, rebellion, resistance rebellion or... Not em- it's, it's another R. It's not emulation, but where you copy. Right. Resistance rebellion, repeating, repeating mm. maybe, I don't know. So you either do what your parents do that you see when you grow up, you absorb it, yeah. or you rebel against it. Well, I, be- they, they, I became a um, conflict avoider, eggshell walker. Right. Was your dad my, very like, oh, yo, fuck it. He was always on the edge yeah. of a, a, yeah. like, bat yeah. shit meltdown. Yeah, so you... Um, yeah. <laughs> headbutting people randomly and just, yeah. like, you know, like, always on the edge of... Uh, and so, like, I, I yeah. developed this coping yeah. Yeah. mechanism. And yeah. in, in business, having a walking on eggshell trying to please everyone, just in the end, it's just, oh, you can't do it. No, you can't. You have to... And so I had to learn conflict. Yeah. If you're trying to be everybody's friend, you're an enemy to yourself. Yes. Mike Tyson Mike fucking Tyson. said that, didn't he? That's it? what I was going to... Mike yeah. Tyson. If you're trying to be everybody's totally. friend, you're an enemy to yourself. Yeah, I can relate to that. Yeah. So I I, to... I'm, I'm the opposite. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't quite say I was like your dad headbutting people, but I'm definitely like... I didn't shy away from it. You know, right. I, I would sit there, I'd meet someone for the first time and they'd give me a funny look, whatever. And I'd be like, all right. And then the next time they give me a funny look and I'd sit down in front of them and go, you all right, mate? See, I, I so... Um, I'd be like, you, you good? Yeah. What's the looks for? Do you know what yeah. I mean? And then there's something like, and then you get called intimidating or, yeah. or, or bully. No. Or, that, um, I'm attracted to that side of you because I didn't have that you. and I had Thank to you. learn it. Oh, <laughs> trailer, new I, trailer. I touched his arm without permission. <laughs> I'm not making light of the situation, but do forgive me, Rob. I, I, I'm aware that I shouldn't have done that. That's the world we're in now. Yeah, I'm is. just like that, man. Like there was, yeah. there was this. I know we're wrapping up, man. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just like that. There was I'm this, not. It's all good. Oh, great. There I, was this I live guy. Here, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here all day, mate. <laughs> he does actually. Li- he does actually live here. Yeah. <laughs> Sleeping bags down there. Um, <laughs> there was this guy. I'm just. I don't know, man. I'm just like there was. This, there was this actor that was years ago, and and funny. He came out on on the thing saying I I bullied him and blah blah blah, but he 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 had. He was backing up the guy that had threatened the lives of my kids, right? So he's backing up this guy on Twitter, like, big up, this, that, and the other, and, you know, he's backing him up. And I, I'm sitting at home seeing this thing, and I'm just like, you know, like your dad, I'm like, when I, when I see you, when I see you, we're having a conversation. Yeah. Right? Three years later, I see this guy, and he says, hey, how you doing? I'm like, don't fucking shake my hand, man. Mm. Shake my hand, we ain't friends. And I just put it on him. So you've done this, you backed up the guy that's putting my kids. Well, ah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But that's just who I was. I wasn't scared of that sort of stuff. I wasn't mm. scared of that confrontation. When my thing happened, he came straight out. I was bullied by Noel Clark here, there, and everywhere, and blah, 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 blah. And so I've realized that, you know, I probably should have handled that in a different way. Now, I, I don't think I was wrong because he was backing up the guy that threatened my children. Mm. But in terms of how he's twisted the narrative for his. His, uh, his benefit, had I not reacted the way I reacted, he wouldn't have been able to do that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So there are things that I've, I've had to look at and I've had to work on and you know, maybe it should have been a bit more of a polite conversation of like, hey, I didn't like what you did here, there, ever. but you know, like your dad, I was, I was always ready to, <laughs> to go. Kick off. Hence, hence, my oldest son is very much like, kind of like you said, you know, non-con- very non-confrontational, mm. very sort of like, I just want to, 
Sick. Everyone to be friends. It all to be nice. Yeah. I want all the yeah. M- myself and my mum spent all the time working in my dad's pub, just trying to dissolve the conflict <laughs> he created in the customers. Yeah. yeah. They shout and scream at him at customers for yeah. wanting another slice of turkey <laughs> yeah, yeah. and all this kind of yeah. stuff. What do you think? Oh, it's a fucking charity. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. They just came in for a yeah, carvery my, dinner. My, <laughs> my, old, my oldest son is very much kind of like, okay, daddy, keep your voice. Yeah. Down. He's very like that. Now the second one. He's, he's double up on you, is he? He's a bit similar to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's why I've I've put him in kickboxing and jujitsu. Yeah, and I've put him in a lot of things that can just discipline him in that way. Mm. You know. And then there's two more. They're kind of too young to kind of, you know, two yeah. more kids. But yeah. Have you ever been scared for your life? Yeah. You tell us about it. Well, there was, uh, there was when I was younger, where I grew up, there was a lot of scrapes and things that, that we got into and I was around people that were shooting and getting shot and stabbing and getting stabbed and it was stuff that I always avoided. Not like I was just out there dodging bullets and all that, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I was kind of the guy that just wasn't involved in I was with them, but I wasn't involved in that stuff. Yeah. Um, but there was one time where I got chased down through Leicester's from Hippodrome through Leicester Square by about 30 knife wielding Filipinos and stuff like that. And they were just like, I knew people that had, they, had, that they had stabbed and chopped shit before. So if they, had, if they had got me, I would not have been nice. Um, so there was that. And there was a few situations like that. A friend of mine got shot stepping on someone's trainers and you know, just like, but then when this happened, I was scared for my life as well because I was just like, I, I was like, I'm out of here. I was just, I'm done. Mm. And so I, I wasn't scared for my life, but I intended to not be around anymore. Mm. You know what I mean? And it, it was, I, I've, the personality that I, ha- I have, I've never had those sorts of thoughts. Never crossed my mind. No matter what had happened, I'm like, you know what I mean? We'll find a way. Mm. But this situation, being Cool, you those. mean the one you're in currently? Yeah, yeah. well, well not n- now, nah. it's two years, yeah. isn't it? But yeah. initially, like, mm. being called all those things and people saying, oh, this, he's done this and that. and like, That was uh, worse than being chased by 30 knife warding people? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And how did you pull yourself out of that and um, get back in the game? Well, I mean, I, I stayed silent for a year. I didn't, I didn't, communicate with anyone for a year. But it sounds like you're the kind of person that would want to come out and fight, or, you know. And I did, but number one, you couldn't, you just couldn't. Anything you said was, was twisted. A statement was put out saying, I'm sorry if I've ever upset anyone. And they were like, well, he's sorry, he's guilty then. Right, it's like, yeah. well, hold on, no, mm. I'm, I am, I'm still sorry if I ever upset anyone. Mm. It's like, it's a different, you're not saying, I've done yeah. it and also I've done all these things. Yeah. You right. could be sorry for something happening even if you didn't do it. A hundred percent, right. So, you know, but it was just, it was the barrage. It was like, I was seeing all these things that I'm supposed to have done and said and this, that and the other. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not laughing at the situation, but I was seeing all these crazy things. He takes, he takes it all, all for jobs. He does this. It, like, just, that's it. But once the narrative was there, it was just, people were just saying everything. And I was like, I got children. I've got a mother, I've got a family, I've got seven aunts, female cousins, mm. I've got a wife, and they're just making you out to be this absolute goon, this villain. And that was, that was worse than anything. That's, that was worse than absolutely anything. And knowing, and they make you believe it. In your head, you start to think, I think they call it gaslighting. You're reading these things and you're like, well, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. And it never happened like that. And that didn't happen. But then you're kind of like, did it? You're like, am I some sort of Jekyll and Hyde that I don't remember suddenly? And you're like, you know, I was getting told I did things. And then literally I had people going through things and be like, you weren't even there. But I couldn't remember. Like I just was gone. It was just gone. It was the, it was the worst ever. And so that was, And you, you know, know in your head, you know, I said, they're gaslighting you, you're believing, but in your heart, you know. Like in my heart, I knew, I was like, there's no way anyone can ever say that I've done X, Y, and Z, because I know I haven't done it. 
but they were so much barrage of stuff. You're just like, and then you, 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 you're almost zombified. I, I literally was like, my mind was like a Rolodex. I was going through every interaction I'd ever had with people in my life. You know, I worked as a gym instructor, lifeguard, personal trainer. I've been around women my whole life. And suddenly you just think, at that time I, I, I'd stretched that woman's hamstring and my foot touched her ankle, or my arm touched her ankle, or my, my hand touched her. Is she gonna say, you, you know, you just go mad. Mm. It's the worst thing ever. I would, I would not, I would not wish it on anyone, ever. Ever. So for me, those were times where uh, I thought my, my life was in danger or whatever. But now, you know, to, I just want, I'm just trying to, <laughs> just trying to move on, bro. Mm. Just trying to move on and, and look after my kids and create what I create. And hopefully there are people that see this or see some of the others and just go, why did we do that? Or you know, why did we pull his shows or why did we do this? Or, or even go, do you know what? It's time for a second chance. And that's not me saying second chance because I think there was a first chance, but clearly everybody else does. So it's like, at what point, at what point when you haven't even been punished for anything because there's no substance or whatever, at what point do does the, the moral high ground of people who decided they're judge and jury now, at what point do they go, okay, you've had enough punishment, come back in. Mm. You know what I mean? Because mm. I think, I think two, had I done anything, I wouldn't have been in jail for two years. So what the mm. f is happening? Do you know mm. what I mean? Mm. What would you like your kids to think about you or to say about you? Not what these f have said about me, no. that's for damn sure. I want them to know that I was a present dad and I was a good dad and that I was around and that I was a good man. Because mm. ultimately, ultimately I know I am. You know, that doesn't stop me from falling out with people. Life is life. Although, particularly now, I try to fall out with less people. I just don't have time for it. Mm. But I know, I'm a, I, know, I know I'm a good person. Always have been. I give people the shirt off my back. I've always helped as many people as I can to my detriment because a lot of those people are people that ended up doing this. But I can't let that change me. I'm always going to help people if I can because that's, that's just who I am. Mm. <laughs> I might be a bit more selective, but... <laughs> <laughs> but that's just who but I how am. how can you ever know anyway? You can't know. No. So you just have to, you just have to be, that doesn't make you perfect, but you just have to be the best person you can be. Mm. And I've always tried to be that. Mm. You know, flaws and all. Yeah. You know, when people highlight a flaw, you go, okay, and you try to remove that flaw and mm. you just try and be better. Mm. You know, and that's, that's all I've ever tried to do. We always finish on a quick fire round. Go. And we do some of the questions that are the same. Yeah. And this one... Is it one word answers or it was? No, nah, just, um, just letting you know that anytime you're ready to go, you can just shorten your answers down. Okay. Taking the, taking the heat out of your feet. Got it. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, one million pound cash there now, or one million new engaged Noel Clark fans on social media, which do you take and why? Take the fans. Mm. Just the engagement, it gets my, my whatever I'm doing out to more people. What would you say is your... I need the money right now, to be honest, but yeah. I'll take the fans. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's long-term thinking, isn't it? You, Because yeah. you, a lot of people say the, the cash, yeah. and I'm always amazed. Yeah. yeah, you can earn that. Yeah, but surely out of a million engaged fans, you can earn more than a million quid cash. 100%, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I'm glad you said that. Yeah, most people take the cash. Yeah, why would you take the cash? Yeah. That's, that's short-term thinking. Yeah. Yeah, the cash, yeah. yeah. Spend it all. <laughs> yeah, and then you're left with nothing. Four followers on social media. Yeah. You know what I mean, f that. Mm. Anyway, yeah, your next one. Go. What would you say is your biggest regret? Interestingly, my biggest regret is helping the amount of people I've helped, although I wouldn't change it. Wow. What's your biggest failure? My biggest failure is not being able, not being empathetic enough. What's one ray of unexpected light that's come through this storm? My baby, not my cousin, he's waving over there. <laughs> You're a close second, the baby.
Why? Saved me. Mm. Saved me. Without that kid, I, I don't know. I don't know. What's one thing that you think is really wrong in the world that you would like to change? If you could have to change the power to change, what would it be? These mother journalists that just want to cut through. I want to go back to the old... I want to find the moment that journalists decide they're not going to be have integrity and become... I want to find that moment and just pull it out like a thread. Excuse my language, you're going to have to beep that, aren't you? Well, we have to beat most of it now. Yeah. <laughs> and now that we're, and we're, we are a sexual worker to the algorithms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, what was it? I forgot the question, though. What's one thing that's wrong in the world you'd like to change? Yeah, that, that, that want... I want integrity back. That's the mm. short way. That's a short way of, of saying it. Mm. This show is called Disruptors. I was called a disruptor. What does that mean to you, that word? Exactly what it says. When I got my TV deal, short answer, when I got my TV deal... You can do a long one if you want. Um, they said to me, TV is too samey, it's too safe, we want a disruptor, and we heard you are a disruptor. And that was the most beautiful thing to hear because being a disruptor for so long, it was always like, oh, not him, not him, not him. And then for them to go, we want someone who's different, was beautiful and then I was different and they loved it and then they turned on me one day. Mm. What's your legacy going to be? Disruptor. Mm. Perfect for the show then. Disruptor, 100%. That's, mm. that's who I, that's, I've been a disruptor since I was a kid. I don't know why. I do not know why. I, uh, you know, a lot of times people read these books like The Secret or they do these affirmations and they do all these things and they, they, they listen to these podcasts and stories about um, visualization and self-belief and all this kind of stuff and I, people have always said to me you don't need to read that you don't need to watch it you don't need to read it you don't need to do it because I've always had it mm. and of course when people don't like it they call you arrogant they call you you know every word under the sun because mm. they can't understand the level of self-belief that you have to have because you have to have it mm. and you have to believe it mm. When I tell people that I think I'm the best, it's not because I believe I'm better than you. It's because I believe I can be. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm. Like I don't think I'm, be I'm not better than you. I eat, sleep and go to just like, excuse me, same as you. Mm. But I believe I can be. Mm. Self-belief. And then they'll hate me for it and then go read their book about manifestations and go like, you have to believe you can be the best. And they'll go, ah, ah listen to all this <laughs> shit. And then they'll see someone else with it and they go, I hate him. Yeah. Yeah. Do you um do you know Andrew Tate or know who he is? I know who he is. Yeah. yeah. Do you think in a way his journey he's gone on the last few months similar to yours? Yeah. Yeah. I mean I think some of his views are extreme. Mm. <laughs> I I kind of don't know why he feels the need to go as far as he does, bearing in mind that he has the following he has. Do you think he got the following he has because he went that far? Yeah, maybe, maybe. maybe. And how maybe, do you stop? Maybe it's more strategic than we, mm. we all know. What I think... I think locking someone up like that without no charges due again. process no. yeah. is not the world we should be living no. in. I don't... He may have done that stuff, I don't know. Mm. I wasn't there, thank God. Can you imagine if I was? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know what I don't know what is the, I don't know what's real and what's well, not. No one does at the right? moment. Right? He wasn't even questioned or charged, but you, so no you, one. You knows. should not be. We should not be in a world where you can lock someone up for that amount of time without knowing. We should not be in a world where what can happen to me can happen. You just can't, you, you, it's all fine. Everyone's fine until it happens to them. Mm, yeah. You know. So uh, that's about as much as I know about him. I have this theory why all this is happening. Let me know what you think. It's because people have had it too easy for a few decades you know there's been no real wars life's been easy what is it they say you know good times creates weak people yeah weak ba people create hard times hard times create good people yeah bad times make better men yeah yeah i mean it's not the the, the generation's fault sometimes i look at my kids so privileged and i think it's not their fault it's oh mine. man yeah it's, not, it's mine oh, don't i, I mean, you can't let you like when oh, i was I a could kid. speak another hour on them look man like trust yeah. me when I'm to like go take the bins out or whatever, I can't. I'm in a game. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're in a f 
game. Mate, you better cancel that thing. I'm online, daddy. I'm online, daddy. Yeah. You better cancel that thing. That thing went. I'm in a game, yeah. Yeah, so what do you think about that? Maybe it's just been a bit easy for the last few decades. I mean, I think it's more nuanced than that. I can't, I mm. can't disagree, but I think there's more. I think the lockdown situation didn't help. No. I really didn't. A friend of mine said that a lot of people's minds kind of went a bit off during that, and I didn't really buy into it. And then all this stuff happened, and I was like, actually, that drove people a little bit crazy. Mm. The whole need to be seen and need to be heard and need for attention came from not being seen for two years. Came from not being heard for two years. Came from being isolated and, and lonely. And, mm. and then everyone came out and it was like, see me, hear me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think there, that was a lot to do with, with everything as well. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a tough one. Mm. So final one, your top says human race. Is that a brand or a message? It's a brand, apparently. Oh, I don't, I don't know. I only I know mean, McQueen I'm and not. the boot in. They're the only two brands oh, I know. Fucking hell, Charlie, Charlie Big Trousers. I only, <laughs> no. know, I only know McQueen and the boot in. Fucking hell, man. Um, maybe I sounded like a dick then, but we won't cut it no, out. No, no. We won't cut it out. <laughs> um, Jesus. Thanks for making me look like a cock on my own show. That's all right, your Le Boutin jeans, yeah? Fucking hell, man. All right. Um, Jesus Christ, have you got people listening? I only like the Bhutan. I only know. I didn't say like, oh, okay, I said no. no I take it, I take I it all back, I take it all back. Um, well, I'm, I'm not, no, apparently it's, it's um, this was a, Chris, this was a Christmas present. I see all these brands present. and I don't understand what they are. No, I didn't either. So for me, it's a message. For me, well, it's a message. that's why I asked. For me, it is a message because you know what, no matter all our differences, no matter the things we say and do and all this kind of stuff, like ultimate, and yeah, there are evil people and whatever, but we're essentially we're a human race, man. Yeah. We should fight nut up and just learn to get on mm. and try to get on and have balance about nut things. Nut up and get on, I like yeah, that. That's alpha male shit. I should be, that's toxic, that's a toxic <laughs> saying. It's a toxic saying, don't say it. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I think we should just all try and just stuck in like, let's just, let's, can't we all just get along yeah. is the phrase? Yeah. But apparently it's a label. Apparently it's Pharrell Williams label. Right, I'll, I'll You know, if Pharrell Williams yeah. drop it like, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's his label, apparently. Yeah. But it was a Christmas present, so I don't, I got a nice pink one as well, pink yeah. hoodie. What are you working on now that you can tell us? <clears throat> I'm writing. I can't really tell you specifics because mm. there, there are no, as I said, there isn't avenues like there were before, but I'm writing, I'm creating. Um, there are people that are starting to gravitate, you know, two years on people are kind of like, okay, well, all right, let's, think about things so things are there are things that are starting there are phone calls that are starting to happen there are reach outs that are starting to happen uh, to be honest mostly from america and, and and other places but things are happening that i can't talk about and you know they haven't less necessarily led to work per se but i'm working i'm writing i'm creating i'm coming up with shows and films i'm writing pictures and ideas and scripts and as I said these things are the, the best things I've, I've, I've written I'm looking at what's on and I'm saying well that's missing I'll just do something like that and, and so I'm just creating mm. and where can we follow you what um where do you not do TikToks so <laughs> so I'm on Twitter at no o'clock yeah I'm on Instagram at no o'clock mm. I'm on Facebook at no o'clock official I think I don't fucking know yeah. just type my name you'll find it and I'm on TikTok at no o'clock x uh, I think you can also search player two. Hey? Oh, I'm on Be Real as well, which is a thing where you be real and you sort of do a picture and then it does an opposite picture. I don't really know what that one is. But, <laughs> but I'm on it. I'm on it. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. Because it does an opposite picture. So if I took a picture of me now, it would also, it would also take a picture of Harry and your jawline over there at the right. same time. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. <laughs> so I'm, I'm on that too. Yeah. At no o'clock. I've really enjoyed this now. It's been so, so have fucking I. great. So as you can see, we had a great time. I would love your thoughts. Certainly being in the interviewer's seat, at times the conversation felt intense. Let me know what you thought of my discussion with Noel Clark in the comments. If you want more world-class conversations with the world's most interesting people, I need your help. Make sure you like the channel, subscribe, and turn the notification bell on.